Okay, so hi. Um, I'm Tyler Rich, and I'm going to talk pretty quickly because I've got five minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about how I got to where I am, uh, sales, PR. I know it's why you guys are at an engineering conference. It's all secretly DevOps. I'll make it make sense. Don't worry about it. So uh, young Tyler had a family friend who led a product design team at IDEO. They're the ones who are responsible for things like Apple's first mouse that you see up there. And my uh, exposure to design at that age was him showing us new toys they created, which was a really strong career motivator for a kid. Uh, so being destined for product design, high school Tyler put together the best art portfolio he could and applied to Columbia College of Chicago. It's an art school, and I like to let people assume it's the Ivy League University. Um, <laughs> so the product design track there was brand new when I arrived. Uh, most of my classmates had never even heard of the discipline. And so I like to describe it as the uh, intersection of art and engineering. So what is it actually? It's a fairly broad field with a lot of different specializations, but at the core, it's about the design of objects. And the first place everyone at art school goes when they're thinking about designing things is look and feel. Everyone wants to make beautiful objects. That's my favorite up there. For me, though, user interaction was the part that captured my interest. Also, I can't draw at all, which is why I dropped out of art school. Uh, so most of my education was actually focusing on how people naturally interact with things and how they experiment and learn when no one's there to teach them how to use something. Uh, so let's start out with the most common example people give, door handles. Uh, so let's imagine we're walking up to an office building, you see the horizontal metal bars up there, how do you open it? You push, obviously, because pulling on that is awkward and wrong. You know how to interface with the object because you've seen it hundreds of times before and it responds to a natural posture for humans to take when they're exerting force. The door handle is the basis of Don Norman's design of everyday things. It's the usability bible. I highly recommend reading it. Um, so operating a door is a simple example of a procedure. It's one that's well designed, it feels natural. It's the same feeling of natural ability that when applied to more complex workflows puts people in the mental state of flow. Uh, it's the state that I want the procedures that I design to put people in. So we get there by studying our developers. You take into account the development environments they're used to, the tools they use, their processes, and you draw analogies between their old processes and your new ideas. When they're able to derive connections from past experiences, the training becomes easier, path to adoption is shorter. Also, the push bar door handle is not a puzzle box. It's a very simple example. There's only one way to interact with it, there's immediate feedback when it's not correct. The same principle applies to software. You may have heard of the principle of least astonishment. Every component of your systems should behave the way people expect it to behave. It seems really obvious, but you'd be surprised how often it's violated. How many times have you seen surprising side effects in software? When people are surprised by these effects, it makes them gun shy, wary of new processes. Adoption slows down, mental state of flow is cut off. So this is why I said I was gonna talk about sales and PR. When I think about my position at my company, my personal clients are not the company's clients. My customers are the other engineers. If I don't manage to sell my processes, I get engineers who try their best to get around guardrails we set up. And that leads to headaches, drifting standards, on-call events. I know this because this morning, instead of listening to the keynote, I was dealing with an on-call event. It was awesome. <laughs> so how are we gonna sell our processes? We're going to make sure that their interfaces are familiar and attractive. We're going to make sure these interfaces make sense in the context of our users' experiences. And we're going to make sure that we're actually listening to and fulfilling the needs of our customers, the engineers. So an interface isn't just visual design. An entry point a user has into your systems is their interface. Command line interfaces are user interface. They require just as much thought as a GUI. CI systems that use scripted pipelines. Source control is your interface. So work on your interfaces. But if you have something new and innovative to introduce and you need to break from tradition, you can't work on their old experiences, all you have to do to sell it is get excited. Enthusiasm in is infectious. <laughs> Show your engineers the cool new features they crave, they'll come. But I got sidetracked from my story. I was talking about actual DevOps stuff. Career in the arts didn't pan out for me. But I think some of the things I learned studying art can be universally applied. And it's probably true for a lot of fields of study out there. So I want to encourage everyone to branch out and see what lessons there are to learn outside of code. Five minutes isn't long enough to really get into principles. Uh, these are really basic examples. So if you want to learn more, here are some uh, resources I recommend. Or come find me later on. Uh, I'm Tyler Rich with Lassus Digital. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>